I come to you on this day of Dino November with a potentially disturbing announcement. You may not realize this, but if you live in the eastern part of the United States of America, you live on the remains of a lost continent. Welcome to 30 Days of Dino November, where we're sharing 30 little-known dinosaurs with big stories. During a lot of the Cretaceous period, what's now North America was split into two continents, Laramidia in the west and Appalachia in the east, by a shallow ocean that ran up what's now the middle of the Great Plains. As luck would have it, the continent of Laramidia wound up developing into the rugged, arid badlands of the modern American West, which are perfect terrain for finding fossils. The conditions in Appalachia were very different. They weren't very good for forming fossils, and they wound up becoming the gentle, rolling green hills of the eastern United States as we know them today. This is a great place to live. It's not a great place to find fossils. Nevertheless, we do have some dinosaur fossils known from Appalachia. Mostly these weren't discovered on purpose. They were found by accident either by construction workers or miners as they were going through layers of bedrock. Today's Dino November spotlight was found in a New Jersey marl pit very similar to the one shown here. Say hello to Dryptosaurus. Admittedly, their fossils here leave a little bit to be desired, but when it was discovered in New Jersey in 1866, this became the first meat-eating dinosaur to be known from the entire continent of North America. People were so excited by Dryptosaurus that it actually became a little bit of a media darling. Long before the age of Tyrannosaurus rex and Spinosaurus and Carnotaurus and these other much more famous meat-eating dinosaurs, Dryptosaurus was everyone's favorite dinosaur. Admittedly, this particular drawing has some, let's say, inaccuracies. Other depictions of Dryptosaurus were completely ahead of their time. This painting by Charles R. Knight was made in 1897, and it was the first painting to ever show dinosaurs as active, warm-blooded animals. It predates Jurassic Park by almost a century. Even though Dryptosaurus is a dinosaur that even most dinosaur-obsessed kids haven't heard of today, it remains pretty scientifically important for two reasons. First, even though the fossils of Dryptosaurus are very incomplete and are quite badly preserved, paleontologists have been able to find enough details on them to establish that Dryptosaurus is a member of a group of dinosaurs called Tyrannosauroidea. It's a close relative of Tyrannosaurus rex. And what's really cool about this is that Dryptosaurus is very much like other Tyrannosauroids in most respects, but instead of having the tiny little dinky arms that T-Rex is famous for, it seems to have had huge hands and particularly really, really big hand claws. Dryptosaurus was doing something fundamentally different than other Tyrannosauroids, although we don't really know exactly what. And while it's tempting to come up with all sorts of behavioral hypotheses about how Dryptosaurus may have hunted its prey, ultimately there's not really a lot of scientific basis to do that. What's much more important about Dryptosaurus is that it shows us that dinosaurs living in Appalachia may have been completely unlike their relatives living in Laramidia and other parts of the world. There may have been entire groups of dinosaurs living in Appalachia that we've got no knowledge of right now, and we probably can't even start to imagine without more fossil material. And I think it's really cool that so many completely bizarre dinosaurs may have lived in the exact same ground that so many people today call home. 